What's going on, my boys? YT Dan back at it again with a new podcast episode. So today we're going to be getting in there talking about Cyber Dragon. It's going to be a deep dive into the archetype where we pretty much discover this archetype. We learn what people are doing with this archetype. And then I take my own creative spin on the archetype and build a deck. Um, you will see that deck list in this video. There's some demonstrations of the combos in this video. Also a discussion about the new combos and strategies that I've devised in this video. And then also um, a deep just conversation about many things Yu-Gi-Oh. So regardless if you are a Cyber Dragon expert, Yu-Gi-Oh expert, or whatever kind of expert you claim yourself to be, this is the type of content for you. And also on that other side of that coin, if you claim yourself to be none of those things and you're just a novice duelist who wants to get back into the game, I feel like the content and the way that I speak about the content here is good enough to pretty much anyone else to grasp. And since it's such a detailed um, video um, combined with recent research that I've done on this, everything's very fresh in my brain um, at the time of recording. So I think that this is highly beneficial to anyone who decides, hey, I want to try out that Cyber Dragon deck. So my boys, let me know in the comment section below what type of archetypes you want to see you know, which archetype deserves to get this type of attention, you know, and uh, let me know because I, I plan on spending like a week to really prepare on these things and then deliver um, an archetype uh, breakdown and deck list for you to enjoy. So don't forget, you know, my book Revival of the Duelist is mainly the inspiration for this. I created a, a means to learning how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! That's very easy. Um, one of the things I talk about in the book about you know, the Xyz uh, generation or the Xyz format or whatever. When that when that came into Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Xyz um, monsters were pretty much resource building monsters. And because of because of that, because I know that, you know, I, I had that idea in mind as I was building this deck and, you know, I was able to do some pretty phenomenal things. So please enjoy watching the rest of this podcast episode. Don't forget to, uh, you know, toggle through this podcast as much as possible. There's also uh, timestamps and things like that. And um, check out the links in the description. But as always, thank you for watching. What's going on, my boys? Welcome back to the YT Dan YouTube channel. Welcome to the Think Phase podcast. I'm YT Dan, legendary duelist. So today we're going to be doing something really special and interesting. Today we are going to be talking about the Cyber Dragon archetype, the Cyber Dragon deck, um, subsequently, you know, Cyber Darks and all that other good stuff, Chimera Tech and all that stuff that contributes to the Cyber Dragon line. Um, today's going to be a very special podcast because today we're going to be kind of doing more than what you would receive in a standard YouTube video. I'm making this video as an open letter, as a forum, as uh, more of like a deeper philosophical dive into Cyber Dragon, learning some nuances about this archetype. I mean, this conversation is for my Cyber Dragon people and anyone who wants to learn Cyber Dragon or is interested in Cyber Dragon or whatever the case may be. My goal with the Think Phase podcast and continuing episodes of this is to make sure that I'm bringing out new archetype based content every week. I'm going to spend a whole week on this. Hopefully you're getting this podcast episode on Monday morning. Um, if so, this is cyber dragon week. You're going to be receiving a cyber dragon video, uh, and master duel cyber dragon video and duel links, um, more of like action duel style, but then also follow up deep dive, podcast conversation where I've done a ton of research. Yes, I've done a ton of research for this. This isn't just something I'm pulling out my ass or some, um, you know, I don't know, some throwaway fucking live stream or video that you might see anywhere. You see garbage Yu-Gi-Oh content on a lot of channels. You're not going to find that here. And this is deep dive, well-researched, ton of information. If you don't know anything about Cyber Dragon, you're going to know too much about Cyber Dragon. When you leave this podcast, if you do know everything about Cyber, Cyber Dragon, you're going to leave knowing a little bit more about Cyber Dragon. And I'm leaving it at, uh, at that. No point in trying to talk about any of that other bull because, you know, 
you know, what's the point? We're on YouTube, man. If you don't like it, click off. So where we are right now, I have written this book, Revival of the Duelists. I was trying to create this in video form. I really felt like this could use like a quote unquote video, but making those little 15, 20 minute videos, number one, isn't enough because I'm talking about this deck, this archetype from the perspective of this book. And what is the perspective of this book? It is a breakdown of everything Yu-Gi-Oh takes this back to the fundamentals of the game and it will teach you how to build a very, very good deck. It will teach you how to build something from scratch. An example of that is this. I followed the directions in this book to the T and it has resulted in an amazing deck. Now, before we get into the general consensus of Cyber Dragon, what Cyber Dragon is and all those other things, um, I will do to my YouTube and ask you to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Obviously, if you don't do that, I'm not getting the attention and retention and the channel dies, I disappear. This content won't be made, duh. So let's get into it. So the Cyber Dragon archetype, my Cyber Dragon deck that I have built after this research that I have applied that if you are impatient, skip to the end to check it out. This Cyber Dragon deck has a lot of amazing features going for it that has nothing to do with the current cyber dragon deck that you're looking at number one which is a cyber dragon deck given to you by konami as a loner which is very similar to most cyber dragon decks that are out there i would just say um, a lot of cyber dragon decks that are out there looks just like this and primarily the focus in those cyber dragon decks is to go second in otk and there's nothing wrong with going second in otk but from my research, from my estimation of this Cyber Dragon situation, I think that it definitely deserves more than that. There's more cards out here. There's more uh, combos out here, and people just aren't seeing them. So, uh, so in this video, I'm bringing that to you. All right, so Cyber Dragon has, or this particular Cyber Dragon deck that I have built for you today, um, has a turn one stun, turn two OTK. Now, turn one stun, you know, what do I mean by that? I can play at least three to four interactions in my opponent's turn with this deck. If you're not hitting three to four interactions, then you're kind of not competitive. You know, one or two interactions isn't good. And I'm not counting hand traps as interactions. I'm talking about things you build. I'm talking about negates. I'm talking about bounces. I'm talking about pops. I'm talking about that kind of stuff. So we're looking at a stun, straight up stun on the first turn, straight up OTK on the second turn, extremely consistent. Also, this deck has three, three normal summons. Now, how many Cyber Dragon decks do you know have three normal summons? Not many, I can tell you that for sure. I'm playing this game, all the Cyber Dragons that I've played against, I haven't seen anybody with three. This one has three. So stick with me to find out how we have three Cyber Dragons in this. So my approach to deck building is not like anybody else's. I literally wrote a book about it. But primarily, we need to find out, number one, what is this deck? You know, um, why are we building it? What is the win condition? What does everything kind of revolve around? And, and the true answer for that is Cyber Dragon. Like, the, the main card in this deck is Cyber Dragon. We know that the main card is Cyber Dragon. What is Cyber Dragon? It is a Cyber Dragon, so it has the name, right? So that's one resource. And this is something that I talk about in the book. Like, everything is a resource in Yu-Gi-Oh. Your job as a Yu-Gi-Oh player is to convert the raw material, which is the card, into a resource usable and malleable for you, not your opponent, not the next duel, not the side game right now. What can you do in terms of a resource? Well, a Cyber Dragon is a huge resource because it is a light level five or five star Cyber Dragon. Those three things right there tells you that this card has so much power in it 
And if you don't know the power from just knowing light level five cyber dragon, if you don't understand that, stick with me, my boy, because we're, we're going to cook in this goddamn podcast video or whatever you want to call this. We're cooking. All right. Cyber dragon level five uh, machine light cyber dragon name uh, 2100 attack. OK, 1600 uh, defense effect monster. Now, when we read the text on this card, it's really important that we understand what we're reading. In Yu-Gi-Oh, they're the second language on all of the cards. And they basically tell you, I'm a go first card or I'm a go second card. That's what they tell you. And, and obvious things like Cyber Dragon is great because that's why I wanted to really start this podcast thing off with cyber dragon i feel like starting it off with cyber dragon will help me bridge the gap for many other decks but anyway cyber dragon reason why it's so prevalent that this card is going second says if your opponent controls a monster why would they control a monster maybe they went first <laughs> so so i mean i'm saying that's a clue in case you don't know how to read Yu-Gi-Oh cards that's the subtext that's the underlying text that's the hidden meaning that's this that esoteric text within the Yu-Gi-Oh card if your opponent controls a monster you can spell summon this card from the hand that means this is a go second card therefore the whole deck is go second because it's the titular card it's the singular card that the whole deck revolves around so don't fight what the deck is that's the number one lesson that you can learn if you don't pick up anything else especially if you're a deck builder don't fight what the deck is so it's telling you this is a cyber dragon name level five and we know that we play stuff like cyber dragon nova which is an exceeds monster so levels do matter and then we also play cards like chimera tech rampage dragon which is just two cyber dragons so names really matter in this deck not to mention all the spells that we're using, you know, all focus around Cyber Dragon. So keep that in mind as we're taking a look at these decks. Now, as you look at the Loner deck, for example, you can see in the Loner deck um, that it runs things like three Cyber Dragons, you know. We're running one Therian King Regulus, and we're running one, um, what is this guy, the, the Light Kaiju, basically. Uh, Jinkyuru, I don't know his name, but something like that. J oh, Jizikiru or something like that. Yeah, Jizikiru, the light uh, kaiju. And basically, we're running a second normal summon here at Chimera, but most people waste this because they don't, either they don't, either they don't use Chimera completely, you know, either they don't use it completely or they're just like, der, link off for Cyber Dragon seeger and play power bond like that's a really bad move if i normal summon core search and i don't know get anything or normal summon core search and grab this use the effect and then end off on seeger and then play power bond and i'm going first that's terrible it's absolutely terrible. So this deck is built to consistently go second and win. This deck isn't built to do anything else. And that's just something that I found that was pretty interesting, but I'm glad that Konami kept some focus. And when I go to masterduelmeta.com or any of those other sites, I see pretty much the same. You know, minus cards like sales ban and think more cards like another ash another max c like you know what i'm saying like in the space of all the filler in the space of you know the back row removal that some people might not like they'll just replace that with more hand traps so when i look at a deck like this you know i i just definitely understand where the focus is and that's something i want to get into and talk about a little bit before we move on is general zeitgeist of Yu-Gi-Oh decks um how pretty much the knowledge in a deck is dead and there's no one around to revive it. I want to really talk about that and highlight that before we talk about anything else in this Cyber Dragon archetype build or deck. Because with the Gladiator Beast, you see that there is a reputation of the deck. Like before Gladiator Beast was a thing, before I made Gladiator Beast a thing, 
before I put Gladiator Beast on the map and put it out online and show people how to actually effectively play the deck using Tri Brigade in the modern day. Before I did that, which has been documented on this channel for maybe 10 years plus now, I think maybe eight years back, you can probably catch a video on my channel that I haven't deleted or removed or changed or put on another channel or whatever. But I think on this channel specifically, you see eight years back of me building this deck from scratch, scratching and scraping and fighting to figure out this game. I put it all in a book <laughs> once I figured it out. But everything that I learned, I put into that Gladiator Beast deck and built it from the ground up to show people so that they could understand that it is about learning the deck and learning the archetype and understanding the nuances of the titular singular card that the deck revolves around. Like Gladiator Beast, what does the deck revolve around? It revolves around Tamer Editor. Like Gladiator Beast don't have, um, well, they used to have Heraklonos where you could say it revolved around that. But with all the fusions and links and all the stuff that came out, clearly the card that they that the deck revolves around is Tamer Editor. So the question is, how do we get Tamer Editor out to do its thing for free or for for one cost? Because that's the idea. Free or one cost. We don't want to do two cards. Like two cards is too 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 many. But in the Cyber Dragon deck, as you will see. This this whole deck is about two card combinations, but you can but you can play these two card combinations in a unique sequence and not lose. But I'm starting to digress from the point. But the point is this: the information on the internet has is, is there is okay. This is the best way for you to think about it. The internet, the information on the internet is stagnated. There are copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. Gladiator Beast deck. I come out with that video. I make that video. I put that deck out. I test that deck. I train that deck. I show you guys how to build that deck. I put it out there. It gets out there. It becomes generalized. Everyone uses it. Everybody plays it. Some people pick it up bigger than me. Some people pick it up smaller than me. And I don't get any quote unquote credit or acknowledgement. And you shouldn't because it's a deck list. But it eventually just dissipates into the quote unquote community of things. And once it gets to the community of things, people make solid judgments, general consensus around how these decks should work or how they operate or what their win condition is. And they have no idea what it is now because they're locked in what it was in the past or what they perceive it to be because they've never actually seen it at work, which is why I'm telling you about the Cyber Dragon deck because I never saw the Cyber Dragon deck at work. People don't play it because it's Cyber Dragon. Then when I started to look it up, I understood why people didn't play it. Cyber Dragon is a cursed archetype. It has many um, negatives to it. So you gotta look out <laughs> when you play Cyber Dragon. So, you know, that's that's a weakness that we'll get into later. But the whole thing about a deck being out of circulation for too long, the whole thing about people playing a deck a certain way or learning how to use cards in a certain way, when people start doing that, you kind of are killing an archetype. You are murdering the actual skill, the art of the deck, because the art comes from deconstruction. The art comes from reconstruction. The art comes from creation, not copying, which is why we're here, <laughs> which is why you're here. I know you know that, but some people need to be um, reinformed. Some people need to be reminded that this is not just a, a rogue attitude or thought, that this is a real problem in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, not a bullshit thumbnail problem, a real problem. Too many people have come together and said, this is how it's done. When that's a lie, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not a zero-sum game. YouTube is definitely a bit of a zero-sum game. You know, your view is not, you know, your view on some other guy's channel isn't a view for me. <laughs> like, you know, you can't view two places at once legitimately and, you know, be counted up on YouTube and be all straight. Like, you know, you'll get dinged, I'll get dinged, everybody gets dinged. 
But at the end of the day, you know, it's not a zero sum game. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh, we look at it like it's a zero sum game. Like if you play this, then and I have that, you lose. If that was the case, we'd be playing paper, scissors, rock, and that's not what we're playing. We're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, where the nuance on things like name, level, and uh, attribute means more than your skill means more than your skill those three things are more important than what you know because i'm gonna tell you why in cyber dragon the only deck that can do this by the way or at least the only deck that i know from my research that can do this by the way cyber dragon is the only deck that has multiple things happen on its normal summon that is disgusting it's scary it's crazy so you got cyber dragon core right and cyber dragon core is the singular card for the deck it's the titular card for the deck cyber dragon core and what does this card say its name is cyber dragon its name becomes cyber dragon on the field or in the graveyard okay so what does that tell you you got a normal me <laughs> you got a normal me that's that's what the first line tells you in this reading before you read anything else this card's name is cyber dragon while it's on the field or in the graveyard well you're gonna have to normal me then the next line if this card is normal summon add a spell or trap from the deck okay so remember the three effect rule which i cover here in the book which you know from the snake eye adventures and all these other things three effect rule number one effect I am Cyber Dragon. Number two effect, when I am normal summon, do a thing. Number three effect, said if your only if your opponent controls a monster and you have no monsters, you can banish this card from the graveyard and special summon a Cyber Dragon from your deck. This card has three effects. If a card has three effects and it's a starter and you're having problems with your deck, you're not using your starter correctly. You're not playing it at the correct time or you're not doing the correct search or you're, or you're in a linear mode of thinking and deck building and the core only gets you into a uh, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. And if core only gets you into Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon and a Galaxy Soldier, you are doing Cyber Dragon wrong. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're missing out. Because this deck has a lot to offer. But this is the only only archetype that does this. Because number one, you can summon this card. And this card can go get two powerful spell cards. That can literally get you into um, <laughs> more Cyber Dragon stuff. Which is Cyber Emergency. And then you got uh, Cyber Repair Plant. Now, with Cyber Emergency and Cyber Repair Plant, you know, these cards are both really good. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, what, I, what do I want to say about these cards? I would say <coughs> that basically in the Cyber Dragon deck, these are your real starters. Like, Core is a starter, but Core isn't the starter. Core is a starter. And the reason why Core is a starter because emergency and the other card uh, repair plant are definitely the starter repair plant is actually a lot better than emergency because repair plant can actually can do many things like you know at first it can either add a light monster to from your deck to the hand phenomenal <laughs> amazing or you can target a light monster in a graveyard and shuffle it back into the deck okay but if you're going to play Ash against uh, and you're playing your opponent, if you, for whatever reason, let this slip through and you didn't Ash this or you got chain blocked or something, your next be best bet is to hit whatever they get from core, which is going to be emergency or repair plant. Especially if they played emergency to get core and then they summon core and then activate core to go get repair plant, Ash dead. Like, you would expect the Cyber Dragon deck to end and die right there. And that is where this Cyber Dragon deck ends and begins off of this core move and then getting ashed and it dies. Hopefully you got called by the grave, but not my Cyber Dragon deck, boy. As you 
will come to understand, as you may already know about me, I, you know, I think about this game differently, but my brain has now forever changed. I've been writing and taking notes and putting stuff together for the Cyber Dragon podcast. And I thought that I was going to have like a stream, uh, not a stream, a, uh, like a script that was going to be very uh, specific on these things. And I realized there's n- it, there's no way I can really do that unless I write another book. And I'm not about to write the book on Cyber Dragon. I'm not about to do that. I just took a bunch of notes and we're just going to talk about this shit. We're going to wrap it out, man. <laughs> okay, so I was telling you about how powerful the name is because I didn't even get off the name yet. I mean, as you can see, uh, I got a lot to tell you about this archetype. We're not, we're just now getting the core. There's going to be a lot more. And that didn't rhyme intentionally, <laughs> but it did. Anyway. Cyber Dragon Core, best card, summon it, go get your three spells. The third spell, I didn't mention it, um, which is Cyber Dark Realm, um, but I, I kind of pseudo mentioned it as I was talking about going to get that, that Cyber Dark Monster going to Power Bond. But you can also get Cyber Dark Realm, and we do run all three. So, you know, you're going to fill the gap, you're going to get one of those three cards, but what else do you get off the summon? Let's say you got. Um, uh, ashed or something like that. You know, your search got ashed or whatever. You know, this card, as long as you can link it off and get it in a graveyard, when it's in the graveyard, its name is Cyber Dragon. So it makes Cyber Dark um, Repair Plant live. So unlike other decks that if you summon your starter and your starter is negated, your play isn't dead because you can still link, put it in the graveyard, and the name being in the grave will let you do a whole lot of other stuff within the deck. But that's not all, because we got the Chimera Tech line, and unlike other archetypes, again, (laughs) something happens to this guy, and he doesn't get to do his search, but his name is still Cyber Dragon, it can easily basically kaiju your monster with uh, the Chimera Tech line. So you got Chimera Tech, Fortress Dragon, which is really good. Basically, Chimera Tech in one machine. Um, and then you got Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon, which is amazing. Uh, Cyber Dragon and one monster in the extra deck. Now, these effects are devastating for sure and, and will break your opponent's board for sure, especially if you're playing around at that clockwork night, my boy, if you if did that clockwork night, my boy, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's mechanized mayhem. If, if you know what I'm saying, you basically can go ahead and just link off your opponents, uh, not link off contact views off your opponent's entire board and put them into the process of the industrial complex and create them, uh, into a cyber dragon mega fleet. Now, nothing's wrong with that. There's plenty of videos and content showing how cool that move is. But from a mainstream competitive sense, you might think, well, that's pretty busted. Why doesn't everybody play that? Or why isn't that being used in some sort of capacity? Why isn't everybody running a a spare copy of Clockwork Knight and Cyber Dragon in their deck? Like, why isn't people doing that? And And I will say, number one, obviously, that's a brick. But the second thing is the main reason why people aren't playing Cyber Dragon, and I would say this is because they're they like I said they had that that, that advantage no one else has. They have a weakness no one else has. If I know that you are on Cyber Dragon, I can just put in a, a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon into my extra deck. And then I can link off or not link off, I can contact fuse off your entire board. And <laughs> I will say this, this deck and archetype has many blessings. It has many uh, attributes, but, but, but the one to be to the, the, the built in self-destruct button is not cool. I don't like that. I, I really, you know, I mean, I don't see this too often, like, you know, but I would imagine this is devastating. I've seen it on stream. I've seen it in a video, but I haven't seen anyone contact fuse there well it hasn't happened to me no one's contact fused my board because they run one copy of chimera tech fortress dragon in their extra deck like nobody does that no one has room to play one chimera tech fortress dragon like and that's one thing i will point out like that konami has done well or or at least decently 
you know, with that whole limit of 15 cards in the extra deck, that does prevent shenanigans like, oh, I got extra space. Let me throw in Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. So, you know, I can appreciate that. But basically what that says is in the Cyber Dragon deck, you can't end on Cyber Dragon. Now just think about that. In the Cyber Dragon deck, it is detrimental to end on Cyber Dragon and a field of machines because this is a, vi it's a viable option that people can play and will play. So what is the solution here? The solution is to diversify and to get away from locks. So in this deck, you are locked in by using Cyber Dragon Master. I don't know why, but I feel like when I look at these videos, everybody is gassing this card. This card is okay at best. This card is not all that good. You play it because in the Cyber Dragon pantheon of cards that are named and called Cyber Dragon, this is the only card that kind of does something that isn't just my name, Cyber Dragon. Like, you know what I'm saying? So because that's the case, um, you play it. But I think this is a bad card because the entire Cyber Dragon deck is all about research and developing technology. That's what this archetype is about. If you haven't gleaned that by now, if I haven't been painfully drilling that into your head for the last 30 minutes, that that is what this archetype is about. It's about research, development, and the product and the, and the product is the deck so you know as we get deeper into this we're going to talk more about the product of the cyber dragon but i did want to point out that master is just an okay card which is why in this thing you only see one of it but you know even konami thinks that you should run three cyber dragon over you know more than one master but i think it's relevant to run more than one master in some cases but master isn't the best card because master locks you in um to uh, uh, machines and locking you into machines ain't good in my deck because we play way more than machines, my boy. Because you know we we combo out here, man. And don't worry, don't worry. I don't have access code talker in there, and I don't have Appaloosa in there. I know that like to make people go oh, cringe, but listen, you don't need Appa or access code but he they can both definitely fit so you, you know what i'm saying so this card basically says discard one other monster okay so you got to have a card in hand so that's gross and you can special summon this card from the hand okay discard one card to special summon i will say this as this discard is okay as long as this discard is profitable as long as this discard is recouped you should never be discarding mm, who what I'll say uh any random card you can't bring back. You need to be bringing you need to either be bringing something back or adding something to your hand or both at the same time when you use Nashter's effect. Which is why I say Nashter is a bad card or not even or or maybe quote unquote and I, I don't like that that word bad and also you'll learn from me i don't like tier lists i don't like calling stuff bad but i called it bad just because you know lack of vocabulary here in the moment but it's one of the less optimal cards be just due to the whole um problem that it locks you into machines and makes you throw away a card that's that's a lot you're asking for a lot right now um so that's why I, I you know i you know i i have these you know i had to preface all that stuff because it's relevant because this car is really strong on one factor just one factor it says something very unique and you got to read in between the lines on these cards again like i said if this card is normal or special summon one for one it's a level one um basically uh, you can target one machine with 2,100 attack or defense and special summoning. Now, there is a ton of cards with 21 attack, 21 defense that can be special summoned from this effect. And, and one of the things that we need to talk about, too, in terms of synergy, because we talked about Cyber Dragon, and we already talked about the name, and we talked about the level and the, and, and the light attribute. We mentioned the 2100 attack, but the reality is this. 
<laughs> we still cooking on the name, boys. We ain't even got on attack yet. We're still in the name section, which is why writing this down was driving me crazy because I just too much information. But anyway, um, we're still on the name tip. And because we're able to summon and we can get our Chimera text going, we can get any search we're going, you know, why aren't we winning every game? Why doesn't this have a steady turn one? You know, why, 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 why? Number one, people are blinded with this Naster play. A lot of people get locked into machine and go, oh, doy, I don't know what to do next. And then also I think people are blinded with this Chimera play because they get the next normal summon and they get the power bond and they, you know, they only play this and they only play this. So when you discard one of these to go get the power bond, then I guess that's it, right? You know, you don't play enough spells to search off of, uh, uh, I mean, not to search. You, you only play three spells, which is power bond, cyber emergency and uh cyber repair plan so if you're playing only three spells and you open with two well i mean you're gonna drop whatever double you got to get the power bond you're just gonna do it so you know outside of telling outside of this card baiting your opponent's ash or or informing you that your opponent has a response or whatever the case may be in most decks this card isn't really getting a lot of play but uh, outside of the OTK going second. I mean, getting a lot of play using its effect fully and, like, you know, really going in. Like, if you're going to do this and fuse on the first turn and use Power Bond to do it, don't get me wrong. That makes sense. But at the end of the day, that's a minus. And you're going to send two cards from your deck to the graveyard with um, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, which is amazing, by the way. We need to really read this effect. Once per turn, send up to two Light Machine Monsters. No other restrictions? Two Light Machine Monsters from your deck to the graveyard? If any, I feel like if any other archetype had a monster like this, it would be fucking banned. You mean to tell me that this thing can go first and set my grave up, or go second, and blow my opponent's field away and kill them on its own? Hmm. Cyber Dragon does have many blessings. However, now it's time to move over to that light category. Light Machine. We talked enough about the name. I didn't mention the other cards because honestly, you know, we can kind of glance over this really. We talked about Hertz, but the, the next car we really need to talk about, I'm sorry, we talked about uh, Nasher, but the next car we really need to talk about is Hertz because Hertz is the only other one we use outside of Cyber Dragon um, and Core. You know, Hertz is the last one. But Hertz is good because Hertz is, you know, again, another one for one target because it's a level one. But um, Hertz says same thing. Its name is Cyber Dragon. And it also has three effects. So again, three effect rule. Three effects here, three effects here, and then this one's three effects here. So three effect rule. We need to be using these effects in the correct sequence so that these things link up. So for example, the correct sequence of a play to, to play Naster, when should you play Naster? You should go Galaxy on Hertz. Hertz effect, if this card is sent to the graveyard, add a Cyber Dragon to deck. Hurts the grave, add Cyber Dragon, then Naster's effect to Cyber Dragon, bring it back. And then after you got two links on the board, link up link five, Cyber Dragon Nova, send one off because you got Hurts in the grave, but the one you send off is Cyber Dragon. Pick Cyber Dragon up, bring it back. Come on. Now in the book, Revival of the Duelist, we talk about the Xyz archetype. We talk about when the Xyz archetype came into the game, how it changed Yu-Gi-Oh! And how the Xyz archetype is a resource building archetype. It makes sense that Xyz archetypes are resource builders because building the Xyz or the overlay network or whatever you want to call it is resource intensive. So the only way you're going to optimize gameplay, turn one or turn two, it doesn't really matter much on turn two which is why people aren't thinking much about this deck because they think of it as a go second dirt dummy deck. So they go ahead and just 
you know, spill the beans, lighten the storm, heavy, heavy, heavy feather duster, empire, blah, blah, and cyber twin attack, die. You know, it's you know that that's cool and all. Don't get me wrong, that is cool. That's literally what I like. That is my style. However, if you can't win those go first games, you won't rank up. So we got to solve for turn one, and then that's what we're doing here. We're solving for turn one, and I talk about the the XE's deck as a resource. Um, intensive resource building deck and that's what this is and it demonstrates it there again we're not fighting this archetype we aren't fighting this archetype we are playing deeply into what this archetype is okay and you got to read like this is the main like we don't need to learn nothing else about this deck we just need to learn the main combo and what's the main combo summon core summon infinity pass <laughs> like that's it <laughs> summon core summon infinity i got hand traps i said emperor pass like that's what people have been doing don't don't act like that's not what they've been doing or they mix it with which i personally do not like and i totally get why people say oh oh your your gladiator beast deck it's it not gladiator beast because it has tribegate in it i get why you might say something like that because i saw an abomination like i think it's called Splite Cyber Dragon or other little random com combinations like that where they literally are running, you know, a better, they're running the better deck with the Cyber Dragon in it with no focus on the Cyber Dragon. The difference between a Splite deck that runs a little bit of Cyber Dragon in it, that's a worse Splite deck actually, versus a Tri Brigade deck that's focused on specifically setting up the tamer editor play and nothing else <laughs> is is dedication is that devotion is it's 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 fine tuning the deck to be a weapon that does a specific thing you know when they when i see these decks the cyber dragon splite what i normally see is well i'm going into my sprite plays you got anything okay well i also have a rand or or before they got into that oh i had a random uh, Cash Tira, you know, you got anything? It is like, okay, now I summon core. That is not how you do it. I mean, I, I understand why you did it that way, but that is not how we're supposed to be doing this thing. So, you know, I talked about that for a little while. I feel like, you know, we, we covered that. But now we're going to start talking about a little bit more on this Cyber Dragon. You know, let's start talking about light. Let's start talking about the light machines that are level five. Let's start talking about that. My boys, allow me to introduce you to the new Cyber Dragon, just released on Android. Cyber Dragon at home, Solar Wind Jammer. Now this card is very interesting. Light, level five machine, 2400 defense. This card is definitely not Cyber Dragon, but definitely Cyber Dragon, with the effect that says, if your opponent controls no monsters, you can special summon this card from the hand, but its original attack and defense is half. Or if you control no monsters, sorry, not if your opponent, sorry, I misspoke. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from the hand, uh, but its original attack and defense is halved. During your standby phase, increase its level by one <laughs> if this thing <laughs> lives a turn. Um, you can only have <laughs> one Solar Jammer on the Field. That's how good this card is. It's crazy. But what's interesting about this card? Why why did I bring this card up? Because this card is a perfect example of, you know, like like it's it's okay, but it's not good enough. You know, don't like people haven't fallen for the bait because obviously with this card being a level five light machine, you know, it fits perfectly in the deck. It can it can be summoned on the first turn. Um, facilitate the exceeds plays and all those other things, but the problem with this deck or my or, or this or this card um, specifically is that it has 2,400 defense, and with 2,400 defense, we can't get it back off Naster, and if we can't get it back off Naster, then you know, kind of not worth it at all. So you know, it, you don't want to bother with this card. But there is a ton of other light machines that I do want to point out. And one light machine I want to point out specifically that gets us in a whole nother conversation, which I eventually 
decided to leave uh, and abandon during the testing phase, which is uh, where are you at? There you go. Union driver. Now we really need to talk about this. Okay. Now this is where this conversation about cyber dragon gets really spicy. I had so much technology by the end of this research that the cyber dragon, I had to leave this out. I had so much, I had so many good combos, so many good moves. I left this out. Okay. So you got to really understand that. This card says once per turn, you can either target one face up monster you control. Equip this card to the target or unequip it and special summon it. Okay. It says if this card is equipped, will be destroyed by battle or card effect. Send this card instead. When this e is equipped, when while, <laughs> while this card is equipped to a monster, you can banish uh this card or banish the, this equip card <laughs> and then equip one level four or lower appropriate union monster from your deck uh to the monster is equipped to now what does that say that means that this is a union card and we're we should be running some sort of union engine and if we are running unions there's only one union that syncs up in this manner light machines man we need light machine unions so that means we're going to need those abcs and we'll talk about that in one second but this card is really good because it can take any union from the deck and equip it but then not only that it is a level five and it can summon itself if it's equipped now you might ask, okay, well, how are you going to get this level five monster on the board? Easy, my son. Theory and King Regulus will bring this card back from the from the grave by equipping it to summon itself. But then, after Regulus summons itself, you can use the Union effect to unequip it. Regulus keeps his Omni Negate, and you get a monster. That's a phenomenal. But that's not all. Because if we're looking at just light machines in general, real talk, if we're just looking at light machines in general, then we got to look at this. We got to look at these ABCs, okay? B, Buster Drake. This card is crazy. You know, it's the only Drake we like around here because he ain't like us. But look, once per turn, you can either target a light machine you control, equip it or unequip, and special summon same as old boy but the difference is this is asking for a light machine he asked for pretty much anybody and this is a monster equipped with this card is unaffected by spell cards so you know a monster so you can so let's say you end your combo and for whatever reason you want to keep b buster drake on regulus when regulus is unaffected by spells there's a messenger piece on board <laughs> And you summon Theory and King Regulus and equipped him with B Buster Drake. You're attacking through that bitch now. So again, you gotta think about these things. You gotta have these things in the back of your mind. Like in this book, I straight up said in the beginning, you need to have some sort of internal knowledge of the cards and how they work. And you don't have to know everything and you don't have to be a super genius, but you gotta at least know like how stuff can benefit you, like how things are uniquely applied and in this uh particular space not only does it make your monster immune to spells but this card also has a second effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard you can add a union monster from the deck to the hand and it doesn't say excluding b buster drake so you can just run three three b buster drakes and use theory and king regulus to send buster drake to the grave special summon buster drake link off or do whatever you need to do with it and then after you do that, search your deck again for another B-Buster Drake. So these cards won't brick up that bad. So maybe you run like one or two. I mean, maybe you run like two, maybe not three. But I'm saying like that, that's really easy to kind of help to get that card to flow. And then you got the other 
ones too. You got the one that says unaffected by traps, and then also it says uh, sent to the graveyard, special summon a union from the hand. That's not all that. That's, that's not the same. And then I think the other one, uh, what was the other one? It recurs it in some way. Uh, I forgot how it does that. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, add a union monster from the graveyard to the hand. Yeah, so recurring from the graveyard, okay. You know, uh, adding from deck to hand, much better. So unions, like, you know, let's talk about that while we're on that, you know, because, you know, I was going to talk about the light. I was going to, you know, but we need to talk about union real quick. It's a quick sub chapter. Again, this is why I said this, right, writing this down is terrible. It's terrible. I have to do it this way. It's the only way this can be done. Unions. The next union we need to talk about heavy mech support armor. Perfect union for what we need. It is a light level three machine union with trace effects. So this is, okay, really like this. If this card is normal summoned, you can target a union monster in the graveyard and special summon it. Mm. Didn't I tell you we get three summons in our Cyber Dragon deck? Okay, hold on. It says once per turn, you can target either, either one of these. You can do the target a machine, super equip, or you can unequip and special summon. And then it says your opponent cannot target a monster, a monster equipped with this card. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and if the monster is going to be destroyed, destroy this instead. Okay. I want to point this out. This card has a normal summon effect that will get you a union from the graveyard. I told you I had to walk away from this combo, man. I found a better combo than Union Regulus Resource Loop. I found a better combo than that. Okay. I told you we get three summons, man. This is why I wanted to use that third summon. That third summon I feel like is really good for this, but I found out that third summon is better for recovery when you... Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. I found out that third summon was better for recovery uh, when you don't play core and you have to start rehearse and do like a link one and all that other stuff. Like when you have to do that kind of stuff, that third summon comes in really handy. If you have a god hand with everything going for yourself and you had a union to, to pitch or the union was going to get pitched by cyber, by, uh, uh, Rampage Dragon or, or whatever the case may be and you had mech support in your hand and core or oh, you're about <laughs> you're about to go the fuck off but that's the whole trick you know running this card running B Buster and running Union Driver like that was my little engine like I ran those three cards or, or actually I ran you know I was running two of these I ran one of these and I ran um one of the other one now another uh, and i ran one of these now another good 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 light machine uh union tuner and i had to throw this away too because I actually i threw away aurora don i threw away aurora don we had an aurora don combo and it was disgusting um i'll sh i'll tell you about that in one second we we will talk about that aurora don combo um but we're on tuners right now, which is why I talk about the Roar Die combo. Then we're going to circle back, and then we're going to get back on talking about more about the um, uh, the attributes of Cyber Dragon that, that that keeps fueling more ideas before we get to the deck list. All right. Torque Tune Gear. You know, once per turn, you can either do the equip because it's a union, um, but also it says a monster that's uh equipped is treated as a tuner so that's really good you know you can literally bring regulus out <laughs> regulus would be a level eight tuner <laughs> i mean come on <laughs> it's a level eight tuner but then also what's cool about it is if you equip it you can unequip and then you can have um a level one tuner on the board and then do whatever you want with it um pretty cool but again not necessarily 
what we need for what we're trying to do. Now, I do want to quickly, since I did bring it up and mention it, I do want to quickly talk about the Aurora 9 combo in this deck. Now, this now if you didn't know, Mega Phantom Beast Aurora 9 is a machine monster. It's a machine link three. And for the machine deck, it's the last link that you will make. Like, literally, that's its effect. But also, you know, it's got 21 attacks. It's coded like Cyber Dragon. Like, this thing... Tell this thing is telling you I belong in the Cyber Dragon deck. Please add me, and I did add it at first, but then I took it out the Cyber Dragon deck only because I don't. This is the one thing I don't like. One thing I don't like. We are working to improve this deck. Why am I running Garnet? When I draw Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion, it feels disgusting. I could summon this card and use it as a tuner you know i you know it says this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects while you control a token i could do that like you know i could banish it from the graveyard and summon it back like i could do all that shit i could do whatever no sorry banish from the graveyard and get an extra normal summon for a mecha phantom beast mm. now before summons in the deck <laughs> but I, I could banish it for its effect but at the end of the day the reality to me is this this brick is just unacceptable i can't do this brick this brick is unacceptable so because the brick is unacceptable that makes the entire play for me unacceptable and if the entire play is unacceptable then we got to get it out of the deck because it's just going to be disappointment like i like there's no point in playing Yu-Gi-Oh and getting disappointed you're only disappointed because you made the bad choice when you build the deck and that's the reality there's no other you know factors that really like re the reality of Yu-Gi-Oh is this if you lose it's your fault <laughs> and I mean regardless of his unfair maxi or any of that other stuff if you lose it's your fault and if you lose it's your fault the question is why you know if if you lose because of maxi did you lose because Maxi because you gave up, or did you lose because Maxi because your opponent drew a gazillion cards and then killed you in one turn? You know, let your opponent try to, you know, sometimes you got to let your opponent try to make a mistake, but in other times, you know, yeah, he ain't going to miss. So, so you got to surrender. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there on that subject. But let us continue. This card says basically on link summon, you can put out three tokens and then basically you can tribute um up to three uh tokens basically and apply these effects and basically you're gonna tribute two to apply the special and if we go ahead and apply the special summon which is really good we can bring out olion and we can go ahead and synchro summon into a synchro number five so this this is why i was using it because mecha phantom beast olion i'm mean, not mecha phantom beast the mecha phantom beast package and it's easy to get three monsters on board. The Mega Phantom Beast package lets you go into this Super Heavy Samurai Sword Master Musashi. So we go into Musashi. And what's interesting about Musashi is you can target any machine in the grave and add it to your hand. Man, what are we doing with Musashi out here? You can just... <laughs> any machine any machine man get regulus back get cyber dragon back get anybody you want back put it in your hand man so this card is going to be either for recovery for the next turn because basically we're going to be summoning out this card we're going to be putting core back in the hand because we're preparing to go get the cyber dark uh realm to go get the cyber dark guy so we can get the cyber dark normal summon so that we can cyber dark discard a spell card and power bond <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> basically that's what this card facilitates this is a recovery card and also it helps to square the um the uh the deck where you would be losing cards with effects like naster or galaxy soldier um because the deck isn't fully optimized you're gonna be gaining them back with Musashi and also um, Aurora Don's combo with the broken token. So I think it's pretty dope. 
think it's pretty cool. I think it's worth playing, but not for me in this deck because I built a new version that I felt surpassed it. So I decided to abandon it. All right, so we've already went over the Cyber Dragon name. We talked about the level five. We talked about machines. We talked about being a light machine. We even talked about 2100 attack and how it's obvious that this card is going second. So I feel like at this point that we have fully broken down the anatomy of the Cyber Dragon that um, we should definitely get into the conversation about the deck. We can get into conversation about every single choice. We can talk about each and every card because that's what this podcast is designed for um open forum to get the conversation going and i want to you know cyber dragon community let me know how i did um regular people community let me know how i did and and i'm gonna keep making these and doing these and, and doing more research and bringing you all types of content you know my goal is to make sure that if i'm gonna be bringing something it's gonna be something that's real and useful and, and it's or it's gonna be artistic and if it ain't artistic and if it ain't useful, I ain't doing it. So that's it. <laughs> so that's where we are right now, my boys. Right here at the beginning of a new cybernetic revolution because you didn't know, but this deck is free to play, man. That's right. The deck that I built for you today is free to play. Most of the stuff that you can get, either you have got from the Cyber Dark Pack or you gotten from somewhere else. Everything in here is pretty much SR except for the extra deck. And, you know, it's the extra deck. But most of the stuff is SR or lower. So let's get into it. So of the Cyber Dragon, you know, like I mentioned to you before, similar to Tri Brigade, I have made, I mean, not Tri Brigade, uh, yeah, similar to Tri Brigade, I have adopted uh, an archetype that will suit our needs. But like Galaxy Soldier, you know, he, he's, he, these, these, these are, these, they're adopted. They're adopted based on the attributes of this card. You wouldn't call this a Galaxy Soldier deck, would you? You wouldn't say that I run a Galaxy deck, would you? You wouldn't say that. You say I play Cyber Dragon, regardless of what else I do first or second. You know, you say I play Cyber Dragon. So if I'm playing Cyber Dragon and I need to synergize, where am I need, what am I synergizing around? Like I told you before, I tried to synergize around light machines. I thought light machines were the answer and we great combos but tons of bricks i didn't like that now i'm dealing with the level five specifically the level five is where our focus is and 2100 those are that is our focus 2100 attacker defense for nostr level five for cyber dragon synergy and everything else will come together in this build i present to you my boys cyber dragon forever free to play this deck is unlike anything that you've ever seen and we will start off with the extra deck chimera tech rampage dragon go second otk finisher go first combo starter chimera tech fortress dragon board breaker and contact fusion target chimera tech mega fleet did I stutter? <laughs> Same thing for the last guy. <laughs> now, this is where it gets spicy. I'd attend the Conquering Star. That's right. I'd attend the Conquering Star. Now, you might be wondering, why the hell are you playing a level 10 fusion warrior with a PhD in text? Well, I'll tell you, my boy. Number one, three effect rule. One, two, three. This card has three effects, so you know it's broken. Number two, fusion targets are two level five or higher warrior monsters. Huh? Huh? How are you doing that, Dan? What's going on? If this card is fusion summoned, you can add a level five warrior monster from your deck to the hand. Huh? What? How are you power bonded this? You can only use the effect of this card once per turn. Once per turn, you can discard any, any number of cards and gain 200 attack for each discard. Now, I like that. I like this move. That's a good move. That's a nice effect in the Cyber Dragon deck, being able to discard any number of cards at my whim. 
especially if I have Cyber Dark Realm up, guess I'll be fusing from the graveyard. Who knows? I don't know. And also, if I'm going second, if this card battles an opponent during damage calculation, if you got a level, you're going down to zero. This card will take you to zero if you got a level. Keep that in mind. As we go to the second target, Rajin, the Break Bolt Star. Huh? What? So I guess he must be running some sort of Break Bolt engine or something. <laughs> we'll find out. 3,000 attack, 2,200 defense, level 10. One level five or higher light warrior monster, one earth warrior monster. That's even more disgusting. That's that's even grosser. YT Dan, you're a madman. I spit on you. Hour and a half you had me watching this. Hour and a half you had me watching this. And you tell me you got the best cyber dragon deck in the game. And you show me two fusion warriors. Yes. Yes. If this card attacks a defense position beast, inflict that piercing damage. Mm, one effect. If this card battles a monster without a level, any damage, any battle damage that is inflicted to your opponent is doubled. 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 Mm -hmm. During the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed by battle or a a card effect and sent there this turn. Damn, a lot of stuff has happened. If all that has happened to this card specifically, you can target two level seven or lower warrior monsters in the graveyard and special summon them. That's pretty cool. So this card floats. This card deals double damage over anybody who doesn't have a level. Are you intrigued? I will, I will suspend you no longer. We will get into this. We have to talk about the Warriors and the Cyber Dragon deck. We got to talk about Amazonas, War Chief. This is the single most powerful discovery of the Cyber Dragon deck since they gave y'all whatever you was like, damn, this is really good in the Cyber Dragon deck. Prismatic, because your boy was chosen. Amazonist War Chief, if you control no monsters like that other card I showed you, or only Amazonist monsters, you can special summon this card from the hand. Ooh, one effect. I like that. Period. Stop right there. Don't tell me nothing else. Period. Summon for free. <laughs> you got my attention. If this card is normal or special, mm, <laughs> you got me really interested. You can set. Oh! I can do what? If this card is normal or special, you can set. You mean to tell me it can't be ash? <laughs> okay. It can set. Well, what can, what can he set? Is he is seti? Is he setting seti from Egypt? No. He can set an Amazon Speller Trap mm. or Palmerization. Let's say what now? You can set polymerization. Yes. Set polymerization. Normal or special. Level five. Earth Wadia. Level five. Earth Wadia. Special summon. Set polymerization. I wonder if we can use polymerization to summon any beast in our Cyber Dragon deck. I wonder if that polymerization will ever be relevant in our Cyber Dragon deck. I wonder if we could ever use polymerization within the Cyber Dragon deck. I wonder if we could do that. But also we could look this up and wonder, I wonder if this card is searchable. Oh, wait, what? Amazon is called, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon is called, take one Amazon is card from your deck, except Amazon is called, and either add it to your hand or send it down. What? I need to take an Amazonist card from my deck and send it down or add it up? What? What are you saying to me right now? Are you telling me that there's a quick play spell card that I could utilize to search my deck 
for Amazon as War Chief? Hmm, that's synergy. Because if I draw War Chief and I have the spell, I could play the spell, get the poly, and fuse the two War Chiefs. If I fuse the two War Chiefs and create Ida 10, the Conquering Star, on the first turn, because he's conquering. He's conquering. He's, he's winning, not losing. He's up, not down. If I bring this man out, he can search any level five warrior from the deck and put it in my hand. But, but what card could I possibly summon? What is the optimal move from searching a deck? I, I'm looking in my deck for a level five warrior in my cyber dragon deck, Dan. What warrior am I going to get? There's no warriors that can cyber dragon. Are there? I present to you this. Kaiza, the hidden star. You don't even know this card. <laughs> I found this card. <laughs> I found this one, my boy. Now look at this. Perfecto Cyber Dragon Synergy. Level 5. 2100 defense. Come on, man. This man, he's, he's locked in, man. He's locked the fuck in, okay? So first off, I want to tell you he's locked in. Second, I want to tell you he's the search from Idaten. Okay, he's locked the fuck in. Don't, don't play with this man. He's locked in. We search him, and what does he do? We summon this card to the field with 4,000 attack. This card is 4 Gs, okay? <laughs> this deck is beat down OTK. You can summon a 4G mans for nothing. This is, this is, this is for nothing. This is for this is all within the War Chief combo. There's other warriors in this deck, of course, but this is all within the War Chief combo. You can cook with this thing. Special summon this hand from special summon this card from your hand by tributing a light or earth warrior monster. And if you do, this card gains attack equal to the tributed monster's original. <laughs> So he goes 4G's 21. Come on. That's effect number one. Three effect rule, baby. You can only special summon one of these this way. Mm. Guess, guess he must be pretty cool. That third effect must be disgusting. You can banish one warrior monster from the graveyard. Huh? I can. Wait. I wonder if I got warrior monsters in the graveyard. Wait. To put this on the field, I had to tribute this. Wait. To get this out, I had to polymerization with this. Okay, okay. Well, if I had to polymerization and tribute my fusion and my level five warrior, then, then what reward do I get? I can send one light or earth warrior monster from my deck to the graveyard. And do you know what beast we send from the deck to the graveyard? We send this right there, boy. We send this card. I had to do a little shimmy. I'm sorry. Photon Emperor. Now, you might be looking, boy, you crazy. Yes. Crazy with the third summon. That's how crazy I am. This is where the third summon comes from. If this card is sent to the graveyard from the field, while another photon or galaxy monster is on the field or in the graveyard, you can special summon this card from the deck. It says except on the field, sorry. Uh, except on the field. Three effects, my boy. You can only use the effect of photon emperor once per turn. Mm, must be really good. After this card is normal or special summon, mm, I like that because it says you can special summon it. I like that. Um, you get an additional normal summon of a light monster in the main phase, in addition to the normal summoner set that you would also have. So this is an additional normal summoner set. And you mean to tell me I get all that from this? Now, let's continue in our extra deck. I already told y'all about Cyber Nova Dragon, which is a great extender card. Let's you pick up a monster, um, you know, Cyber Dragon from the grave. You know, perfect. Here's another card that I don't see in a lot of decks, but I do see in more competitive decks. I see in more serious decks. So I'm not the first to play this, definitely. But a lot of people um, don't use this. I don't know why. But two level five monsters 
uh, detach a material, target an earth monster in the graveyard, add that to your hand or send it down. Okay, so that's amazing. And then if this card is in the graveyard, you can tribute uh, one machine, link monster, and special summon it. So if you ever need a 2500 beater that has the um, ability to, you know, destroy monsters and attach, you know, if you ever want to do that, then, hey, you know, you can always have that option if you got an earth machine. Uh, but honestly, that doesn't come up much. What really comes up is that search. And basically, you're going to use Infinitrack Stormer to search Theory and King Regulus. Now, I've been playing around with more than one copy of Regulus. I do like double or triple Regulus. That I do like that. I think that that is good. I like that. But what I found is double or triple Regulus isn't good on draw. You know, um, so, you know, good on draw, what, what does that mean to me? Good on draw, that means going second. I draw a second Regulus. Or um let me see uh yeah on my third turn you know i draw regulus like that's what i'm talking about i'm talking about that not good on the draw because i'm gonna search regulus on turn one if i'm if, if everything's going good and i get to search i'm gonna search regulus but if things are going bad i won't be able to search regulus <laughs> regardless uh if regulus is in hand he's probably clogging stuff up because his effect only works when things are in the grave and he doesn't get stuff going he takes advantage of things that are already in process so um river stormer excellent card to go get regulus um here's another card that i don't see anybody playing that i think is an amazing card because this card will stop nibiru i forgot to mention all these powers that i was telling you about triple normal summons and stuff you know i tell y'all what i think is cool but I like this style of the deck, you know, I mean, not deck, this style of podcast and things like that, because we can really get down to nitty gritty into details. And, and to be very frank, uh, this card, Chronomaly Vimana, basically says kill Nibiru, <laughs> eat up the um, any uh, Xyz monsters in the grave. This thing has a battle effect which basically you can target one monster and an Xyz monster in the graveyard or Chronomaly monster if you got that. And then basically um, put it onto this card as a material and then give the other guy a boost. That's crazy. And then also you can detach two cards and negate any effect activation. So from the hand, Nibiru, Ash, any of that shit, you can drop this first and go nuts. But, but Dan, how am I going to play this first? I've got to invest all my... No, you don't. Shut your, shut your filthy mouth. Special summon. The war chief. Come on. We know what you're trying to do. You got a big play here. You want to summon Cyber Dragon Core and win. Special summon war chief. Then go ahead and special summon galaxy soldier. And go ahead and hit that. <laughs> and go ahead and hit this shit, man. <laughs> no nib, no ash, no nothing. Hit this first. And then you get the rest later. Now, if they hit you with Max C, cry. Now, we're going over to Cyber Dragon Infinity. Y'all know what he do. He's an Omni Negate. And basically, he can overlay over your Cyber Nova. So you basically go Cyber Nova, bring back Cyber Dragon, then Cyber Infinity, eat somebody's monster, attack for game kind of thing. Also, I said eat somebody's monster. I totally forgot to mention. Yes. Let's go over these effects. This guy... His name is Cyber Dragon. He will get your cheeks. Um, he will got an attack boost for all the materials. Detach a material uh, to negate any card. You know, monster effects, spell trap. When it's activated, negate that shit. And then once per turn, you can target a face-up monster on the field, yours or your opponent's. If it's in attack position, this card can eat it. So, you know, pretty interesting. Very, very good card. Um, Divine Arsenal Zeus, um, because of course, you know, if we succeed deck, why not? You know, and if you didn't know what this card does, basically he can nuke your entire board. You know, after he can overlay over any exceeds monsters, detach two materials, kill all cards on the field. All cards are sent to the graveyard except him. And then, you know, <laughs> hopefully you win after that. Salmon Great Al Mirage helps off our Link One plays. Uh, Cyber Dragon C, yeah, because, you know, OTK style. Galaxy Eye Soul Flare Dragon. Now, 
a lot of people aren't using this. I would imagine they don't because they don't use a lot of uh, Galaxy or Photon cards, but we do use a lot of Galaxy and Photon cards or enough Galaxy and Photon cards for there to be at least one. And if there's at least one Galaxy or Photon card in a graveyard, this card can basically pop any special summon monster um, on a quick effect. So basically, when you summon this card, you can add a Photon or Galaxy monster to your hand from the graveyard probably use the photon or galaxy monster to make this thing amazing then add that shit back and then use it as discard fodder for its effect on the next turn so pretty good i like it um definitely a tool there's many other level uh uh, uh exceeds five tools and i'll go into that um after we finish taking a look here um and then also Shout out to your boy for being prismatic. <laughs> and then we run an IP um, SP. And honestly, IP SP is so good. Like, you know, even like even if I think about it, let me see. Can I do that? That would be kind of crazy. Be like, bam, hit this. You like IP, surprise. <laughs> That'd be funny. But uh anyway, IP SP really good. Works amazing because we get three normal summons, my boy. If we get three normal summons. Well, what two normal summons need to become IPSP? What is what is that? We're looking at Core, and we're looking at um, the Cyber Dark Chimera. Basically, if you can put Chimera and Core on board, they need to become in. They need to become IPSP. I don't care if you plan on using Power Bond or not. They need to become IPSP. That's how you're going to get your value back, and then also. Um, that's how you're going to maximize that play. Because not only are you going to take stuff away from your opponent, instead of throwing it into All Mirage and hoping that you can get to IP so that you can maybe use All Mirage, instead of All Mirage just being a waste, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you're better off with the IP SV. Uh, but you still need All Mirage. Um, and, and that's the extra deck in a nutshell. Now, Contrary to popular belief, I don't I don't know if, you know, people really believe this or think this, but I personally believe this. You know, you're building a deck, especially a deck that uses your extra deck. Your, your extra deck is your deck. Like, this, this is the deck. These 15 cards, these 15 choices are, is the deck. Like, this is the guts, but these 15 choices is the deck. So the, so the selection in here is very important. Like, you know, everything in here is set up and calibrated for me to do it one time and and to not have to do it a second time so this is a win or lose live or die kind of deck you know so basically you got your go second you know let me see i'll tell you like this go second go second go second go second actually one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12. Yeah, we got 12 cards dedicated to basically going second. But the 12 cards dedicated to going second can be played going first. So it's, it's you know, except Zeus. <laughs> except Zeus. Everything else is dedicated to going first. So I think that's, you know, fair. It's fine. Um, so let's talk about other XCs rank fives because I think that's really important here. Other exceeds rank five that I left out. Number C79, Battling Boxer General Kaiser. This card can negate a summon straight up. <laughs> Detach two materials, negate a summon, and you need three materials to bring him out. Thought he was pretty cool, but didn't um, use him. Constellar Pleiades. Um, Detach a material, then you can target one card on the field, return it to the hand, quick effect. Also, a light warrior also um, has some other, like, synergies for other Constellar stacking stuff. And honestly, this that's I didn't need all that. So I didn't read up on all that. But he can also do that. So you can go that way, too. And um, what's another one? Or was that just it? I believe that those are the only ones I was really torn on. Yeah, those are the only ones I was really torn on. 
Um, so basically, you know, you got that. Now I did mention, you know, we're using this effect, right? And we're searching our deck and adding a level five or higher warrior. Um, you know, when I first built this deck uh, and I put this combo in here, I did have this line of five cards that I thought worked really well, which is overlay booster, um, photon slasher, and then you got the, uh, the heroic dragon of the East. Now, the reason why I'm running this is because contrary to all the other cards in the deck that allow you special summon them for free, this card is a free normal summon that's a level five and also it syncs up with Photon Emperor. So I think that like just running this, at least one of these is good just based off of its effect and you know that it, it remains a level five and it can be normal summon in addition to everything else you're doing because you get three summons in here and two of those summons are going to be a light monster you don't know you know if it's going to be core in this guy or it's going to be hurts and core like you know pretty much it's going to be core and somebody else and if it's core in this guy i think it's pretty good if it's core in this guy not so much you know because you need this in your hand the combo um and um yeah also, you got Photon Slasher. Again, this is another extender, Light Warrior. I don't really like that. You kind of take this out. And then you got uh, Overlay Booster, for example. Overlay Booster is really good uh, because if you do the, for example, let's say you did the whole combo and let's say you open with Kaiser in hand, you can still search the Overlay Booster. And then, of course, the Overlay Booster facilitates with the Fusion. So yeah, it, you know, it probably go a little more something like this or, or until we either get a better option for the uh, Light Warrior or, or whatever the case may be. But I just didn't want to run a second Kaiser. I didn't want to, I don't like running more than one Nashter. I don't like running more than two Cyber Dragons and I don't like Machine Dupe. Um, you know, I got Clockwork Knights in here right but clockwork knights is 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 okay because you gotta physically draw it and 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 physically drawing you can't rely on that so it's like you know clockwork knights is okay you know that's why i don't i think that that's a big trap that a lot of cyber dragon uh players fall into they go oh man clockwork knight you know this is such a good card you know i get so much advantage off of this but the rest of your deck is ass, bro. <laughs> the rest of your deck can't play through a paper bag, bro. Like, you know, anyway, <laughs> Clockwork Knight ain't it. Like, you know, it's, it's good, but it ain't it. You need to not focus on Clockwork Knight. Um, I, you know, that's just one thing I just know. People focus too much on Clockwork Knight. Now, I decided to run three of the titular spells, you know, three emergency call uh three cyber dark round three cyber repair plan why well basically because these cards all revolve around one another and if you can get any one of these cards in hand and combine them with the other cards that's disgusting you can, you can play through just about anything i don't like messing with the ratios of my spells and traps, this is about as high as I get in my spells and traps. Because if you look at it, when you draw five, you know, two spells, draw fives, one spell, draw fives, what's that, three spells, draw five, three spells, draw five, two spells. Like, I would rather go two, two spells, three spells, something like that, you know, at, at the max. I, I can't have four spells. Four spells, yeah. Four spells is actually, this... This is actually the first time I've ever had four spells. Look at this shit. This is the first time I've ever had four spells, and it's been this fucking good. I've never seen this. You draw the one Clockwork Knight, the one Pot of Prosperity, Cyber Repair Plant, Cyber Dark Realm, Cyber Dragon Core. Okay. But, I mean, that is pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Can't go blind. But, you know, you don't want four spells because four spells could be, for example... You know, three cyber dark realm, you're dead. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want that. But 
as you see in these draw fives, you know, you see how easy it is to get these hands going. Like, for example, like this isn't the best hand because, you know, cyber repair plant, you need a cyber dragon card. So, I mean, the reality would be one of two things. Either you're going to take this out and put in a foolish burial because I think foolish burial is one of the better cards to play. Um, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you're going first, like if I was going first with this hand and this was foolish, okay, that'd be cool. But if I'm going first with this hand and basically I'm like, all right, this is going to be it. I'm going to summon this. I'm going to summon this. And then, um, uh, or I'm going to summon this and then it's like, okay, well, I know I'm going to have to deal with, uh, whatever. I got this max C in my hand. My option is to either go into, you know, link two fine or go into a six and either it's going to be six like this into you know into regulus or it's going to be six like this into chronomalus and if and all that under a maxi like you know what's the draw a cyber dragon gore yeah if i'm going second then you know i'm not too pressed um but again something just to watch out for like a hand like this where there's one, two, three, four cards and repair plant. Like, you know, you normally need repair plant and something else, Cyber Dragon, to get it going, which namely core or or hurts. But, you know, if you, if you don't have that, you don't have that. Now, when I built this deck, I didn't build it with a bunch of hand traps in mind. I just only put in basically Maxi and um, Nibiru, and then I got the clockwork thing for going second. Honestly, these three cards could be hand traps. This could be a hand trap. You know, I put in these things to just show you the most efficient, the best creme de la creme of the card pool in one space so you can have a visualization. It's not necessarily to say, oh, this is the best version. Like, run this no matter what and you'll get victory. No. This is to say... This is the basic version of this, and it can be improved, should be improved. Excuse me. Like I, um, like I mentioned before, I was saying it can be improved, will be improved, should be improved. And um, like I mentioned, there's tons of options. Like I showed you before, uh, we have those different cards that we can use, the light unions. Uh, for example, and many, many other things. But the Light Union was just, honestly, of all the other options, I felt the Light Union was the best um, recommendation I could make to anyone. If, if someone else was to continue this thought or continue this um, deck beyond uh, the conversation that we're having here today, I would say Light Union is something that you should explore. Um, you know, you know, hell, you could take this out too. You don't really need the third summon. But I have it in here because you need to see it. Like, you need to know. Like, this video is for you. It's not for me. I know this deck is good. I can play this deck. I built this deck and been doing my work with it for a week. You know? I put all this together over a week's time for you. But at the end of the day, you know, if you choose not to take any of this or experiment with it or play with it or learn from it, you know, hey, it is what it is. But... In a nutshell, this is what I've discovered. So the Cyber Dragon deck. So so what is it that we have improved here over the structure deck or or the or the tri deck? You know, what if we have improved over the um, standard meta deck? Number one, this deck is more consistent going first. You have more than just playing Cyber Dragon core as a play. If you don't get into core, you can actually, you know, do something competitive within theme, which is summon machines, negate, negate, kill, kill. Um, second thing, you know, after having a solid go first play, you know, it's not a solid go first play where it's linear. It's a solid go first play that can either be ridiculous and have something crazy like six options in terms of responses or it could be a, a response and play where it could have something like two responses. It just really depends on how many cards you want to put in. Um, Light Rock Nibiru really works well in this deck. <laughs> so, you know, definitely should play Nibiru in this deck. And Maxi, you know, honestly, probably put Maxi like the three. Why not? 
you know, going second deck. Max C at three with one nib, and you got the Clockwork Knight. You definitely need more than that. Maybe like Lightning Storms and other stuff like that. But um, for the sake of just building this deck, you know, heck, it is what it is. Um, and making this podcast for y'all. And also Overflow. We need to really talk about Overflow. Now, a lot of people don't use Overflow, and I don't know why. If you plan on going first, you should use Overflow. Um, as a matter of fact, Core should be searching Overflow, which is why I run three copies. Like, if you think about it, if I summon Core, if I have Core in hand and I have this and this, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to get over fucking flow. Like, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. If I have core in hand and I have emergency and repair plan, I'm going to get core. I'm not going to get this. Like I can go and get this. Sure. I'm going to get core because in core, the most I've ever had on pops consistently was three pops. The least at least one like so i mean one to three pops is pretty good you know two pops is disgusting but one to three is pretty good so basically that's the gist of it we got to make sure that we're going to get core you know i mean not core uh, cybernetic overflow cybernetic overflow will cover a lot of your gaps in terms of weakness because if you think about it you know, how does this deck respond to people? It responds to them with a negate, and this this isn't the best negate. This is once per turn, opponent activates a card effect, quick effect, detach, negate the activation. Oh, this destroys it. Sorry. He destroys it. This guy doesn't destroy. Let me double check. Yeah, negate. Yeah. He negates and doesn't destroy. This guy negates and destroys. But I'm saying, like, you got a weak negate, and then you got a strong negate. Then you got an effect monster specific negate. You got um, a monster special summon pop. And then, you know, extra deck banish and all that other stuff. Like, like we got moves, but these moves are nuanced moves that require, you know, they're, they're not just like like do it kind of moves. Like they 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 require a bit of a setup, not a lot of setup, but a bit of a setup. So you got to really watch what you're doing, like in this deck. The deck is easy to play, but it gets easier the more you know about Cyber Dragon and the more you know about your opponent. So I think that at the end of this, as I look at this deck and I and I talk and I've been talking to you guys about this for maybe two hours plus. You know, I really feel like this is that kind of deck that can provide a lot of value, but you really, I, I can't just talk to you about value. You got to see value. So later on in this um, video or f literally following this segment, you will see practice where I'm going to show you combos, where I'm going to show you how to play this deck. And we're going to get in there and uh, have a lot of fun. It's going to be really interesting. Um, so let's go ahead and hop over to that and take a look at this deck in action. Uh, later on this week, you will get a live stream. I'll be one. I'll be, you know, playing ranked one on one in this deck against folks. And then also um, I will be uh, creating like a little cool video for this one and then dual links and then all this other stuff because it's Cyber Dragon Week. And Zane Truesdale will be proud, my boy. All right, so let's go ahead and hop over to some of those practice games. All right, my boys, we're going to be starting out um, with our Cyber Dragon deck. And this is a pretty interesting hand because we open two Realm, Emergency, and Core. So basically, like I said um, in our previous conversations while we were building this up, the whole goal of this deck is to make sure that we activate all three of these cards. And if we can activate all three of these cards, we can definitely get a dub out of it. So let's go ahead and start cyber dark realm pop the realm add the chimera use realms effect to summon chimera and then now that we have two realms and we don't need this anymore we can just go ahead and just do the realm thing and now we got the power bond okay so that was just one complete normal summon of the chimera tech line and now we got the power bond so we're fully ready to do any other shenanigans we need to do so let's go ahead and normal summon Cyber Dragon Core. And then we're either going to add this card, right? Which is going to get us into Galaxy Soldier. Or we're going to add this card. 
which is going to be overflow. Now, it's up to you what you add, you know, what you want to do here, but definitely you should, there's a lot to consider because if we do have power bond in hand. We can fusion summon into the level five um, uh, Chimera Tech Cyber Dragon and basically have another monster to do Xyz place plus set up our graveyard and then also use Naster's effect um, with Galaxy Soldier and other things. Or we can end this on a very simple IPSP uh, board with uh, Cybernetic Overflow. So, so it just you have a lot of options because pretty much you open with these spells that that core can search. So, you know, you just have to consider all these things as you're doing it. But you know, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to stick to Galaxy combos. So let's go ahead and add this and let's go ahead and add our uh, our Cyber Dragon Hertz. Then we're going to link to and now that we link to um, we got IP on the field. So we got IP SP confirmed four cards in hand. OK, that's pretty good at this point. You know, we definitely need a target though. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add Galaxy. And we still can pop this power bond because we did set up the power bond in the graveyard combo. And we do have the Cyber Dragon names. So, you know, we are we are cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and chain block that Cyber Dragon hurts. Because we are gonna probably either, when Hertz effect goes off, I like to do two things. I like to either grab core or we're gonna either grab the Cyber Dragon. But grabbing core is for follow up on the next turn if you plan on OTKing. Um, you know, you, you just kind of have to think like, like, do I really need that right now? And, and in my mind, I'm thinking like, I kind of wanna pick up the core, but I know if I, get cyber dragon for example hertz can bring it back last so let's get cyber dragon all right so we still got four cards in hand and then we've got our ipsp set up now we're going to probably lock ourselves into machines now because um it's the perfect time to do so we got ipsp already set up and i'm not going to be taking any minuses on our resources here so let's send cyber dragon with um naster Nash's effect brings back Cyber Dragon from the graveyard. Now, at the same time, we have a target for our IPSP, and now we got two level five monsters on board. So let's go ahead and do the Cyber Dragon Nova play. Because if we make the Cyber Dragon Nova, pretty good. We can detach. And then we can bring back a card. Now, what I like to bring back off of here, I like to bring core back to get our search. You know, I think that that's solid. <laughs> you know, you got IP, SP, and then you got core to, to stop the search. And then you go ahead and hit this, hit the infinity. Yep. And now if we want, we could go into Seeger, our power bond into five and dump two and then, you know, go into Seeger. But I don't want to do that. I want to just kind of keep this the way it is because IPSP is two cards plus a recovery, you know, two banishes plus recovery for me, which is great. And then I also have an Omni negate that destroys. So let's just go ahead and end the turn and switch over to our buggy opponent. So buggy field spell, you know, not of total concern because basically it's a it's for when when you get set up. Tried to bait me with the field spell pops for Geki, so we're gonna have to negate that, and we're gonna need to. We always want to send the most optimal resources, and this is it because on the next turn we might get an opportunity to exceed another Chronomaly monster, and it'll be an, and that will become important if we need to do that. So Regeki got negated, set set, and we're gonna do the SP Little Knight. 
because he of how he set it up. All right, and then we're gonna do Hertz effect chain block with the little knight. We're gonna banish that face down monster because we do have an Omni Negate on board, so that's fine. All right, get that up out of here, and then let's go ahead and add the core. All right, go to first uh, techniques. Dutto, Photon Emperor, perfect because now we have um, Photon and Galaxy monsters in our hand. Um, when we do the Photon Emperor combo. Um, we can really go in. But before we go Photon Emperor, let's get rid of the rest of his cards. So we're gonna summon, and then we're gonna use our effect. Uh, what are we gonna search for? We actually don't need to search for anything, you know, because we, we really got everything. So let's go ahead and add the Cybernetic Overflow, and then we're gonna pop the Power Bond. Now that we pop Power Bond, we're gonna fuse this one, and this one, we've decided. And then we're gonna bring forth the Chimera Tech Rampage. Now when Rampage hits the field, effect activates the pop. And we're boosted because of power bond. So it's game time. Two, two attacks direct on this is over. So then we're gonna activate the effect. And then we're gonna send two to the graveyard. One and two. Send core and Hertz. Hertz effect just in case you survive by some miracle and then look at this 81 of those things before we had to do anything else 81 of those things set this for dual links posterity and we have this play too we, we can still go in with this play we can still hit another exceeds so let's let's just do it for the sake of for the sake of this demonstration my boy we don't need to do that we already have the game on board let's win more okay Let's go ahead and pop the Emperor. Let's go ahead and pop the Soldier. Let's win more right now. Let's go ahead and win more right now. Emperor's Effect, I mean, sorry, Soldier Effect, add. Emperor's Effect, Summon. Normal Summon activated. So, you know, now that the Normal Summon has been unlocked, we can just basically continue this combo because, you know, we already did our fusion for our game ending card. But you know, it's time to time to just flex some more Xyz on you. So we definitely can use Rain Rainstormer to get Therian King Regulus, but I like this card a lot more because we're gonna take advantage of the Xyz monster in our graveyard. I can show you this. So let's go ahead and Xyz the Chronomaly Bimana. Powerful, powerful card. Now this card has a crazy effect because less than 1% played. The first effect says you can give it uh, a boost by targeting a face-up monster on the field and um, exceeds monster or chronomaly monster in the graveyard. And then that monster gains half of the attack of the monster in the graveyard, then attach that monster as a material to this card, giving it basically an ability to recharge its batteries, so to speak. So let's go ahead and do that and give even more power to our uh, cybernetic beast. So we're at 52 fit that. <laughs> What's his attack at? <laughs> you know, about 52 fit that. So let's go ahead and go into battle with 5250. Boom. Boom. <laughs> 5250. Come on, man. Chronomaly mana. Let's continue more first turn actions. All right, so this is actually pretty interesting hand. We opened with a nice variety of cards, but I'm gonna start out with um, this combo because basically Galaxy Soldier, if you lead with Galaxy Soldier, you can kind of set up a negate. Uh, so make sure that you can't get, your core isn't interrupted. So let's uh, do the Galaxy Soldier and then we're gonna use Hertz. Cause you wanna make sure that core isn't interrupted if you possibly can. If you feel like your core is threatened, like this is a good way to protect it. All right, so let's use Galaxy Soldier's effect. And then we're gonna send Cyber Dragon to the grave. Bam. Now, before we do anything else right now, if we are afraid of Nibiru 
or we are afraid of any other plays, Chronomaly v. Mana is what we should be going into. But if we know that we're not going to have any issues, then we don't have to worry about Chronomaly v. Mana. Um, we can go into something different um, and just continue our plays from there. But honestly, I think, you know, since we already use Cyber Repair Plant, um, the next card we're probably going to get is uh, Cyber Dragon Hurts that can kind of get the ball moving. I'm not talking about Cyber Dragon uh, Nashter to get the ball moving. So it's like, what do you want to do here with your Xyz? But again, if you're feeling threatened, Chronomaly V Mana is definitely the card that you can use to uh, protect you. Um, but right now, I think what I'm going to set up is actually something a little different now that I've started to talk about playing the Vimana. I kind of want to just set up, you know, we can set up a Photon Pop, which could destroy a monster special summoned, um, a special summoned monster on your opponent's side of the field. And then also we could set up uh, Cyber Dragon uh, Core to go and get the Cyber Dragon uh, Overflow and then we could have mm, like like two or three pops. So it just kind of really depend on what you really want to get at here. But at the end of the day, um, if if I was playing this and I went first, you know, and I'm and I'm definitely worried about Nibiru or or something. Let's just hit the Vimana, you know, because I'm worried that for whatever reason I'm scared that Core is gonna get blocked, and I want Core uh, to be straight. So let's summon. And then right here, again, you got Overflow. You can have three pops by going into All Mirage. So that's three pops and a monster negate that can negate from the hand too. And it's in defense mode, so it can't get blown up. So you can have three pops and a trap card or a monster negate, or you can just kind of extend your combo. Or if you want, you know, you can go into uh, Link 2s. Um, but I believe this is, you need a... Uh, you need, you need two lights for this one. So what is it that we want to do here? Well, let's go ahead and do Cyber Repair Plant because obviously, uh, you know, we do got a little bit set up for this. So Cyber Repair Plant, add a light. What light we add in? You know what light we add in. We add in this guy. So let's pop the soldier again. Because we don't want to end on just, you know, Vimana alone. Now we bricked on Kaza the the, uh, the star, the hidden star. But honestly, I would say this though about this particular brick. You know, I'm not too worried about this brick because obviously we can use it. And the way that I played this was weird. That caused me to end on a minus one. But also that's showing you if you needed to do this to recover after you were Ash, then this is also a play that's open to you as well. So I just want to show this play as going first because you got a pop on a special summon, plus you get a negate on a monster effect. And if you sent an Xyz monster to the grave, you get a boost. This guy can turn into Zeus next turn. It's just a lot of options you get by shopping Chronomaly V Mana first. And if your opponent had Nibiru and you just end it like this, then your, your opponent is neg one a card. Now they are playing out of four cards and they're gonna draw B on five. Again, a negate and a pop can be enough to end an opponent but like i mentioned before in this podcast two responses is kind of weak so i don't particularly like that but let's take a look at another setup so we opened up with our amazonist war chief and this card is really good because it's going to give us that polymerization we also open cyber dragon core hurts galaxy soldier and cyber emergency so we literally open the quote-unquote god hand so as long as we don't squander these resources, we should be good. So the first thing we want to do is Amazon is War Chief. Now be careful. After you summon Amazon is War Chief, her effect activates setting polymerization directly from your deck. Now you can no longer attack with any other monsters except for Amazon is War Chief. So be careful on first turn. Now we're going to go ahead and normal summon cyber dark core and because we already opened emergency 
Galaxy and Hertz, we either are going to be getting Cyber Dark Realm or we're getting Overflow. Now, now, why do we want Realm or Overflow? Well, if we go and get Realm, that puts us into our, you know, extra normal summon, um, which helps us get into Link to place. But we want Overflow because we got an overflow of a good hand here <laughs> and there's and there's literally no need to waste resources here and we're basically gonna probably hold on to that polymerization so now that we've done this we're gonna do um hertz effect and galaxy soldiers effect and now we're gonna go get the cyber dragon instead of recovering the core like i've done on other plays because basically again the hand was really good <laughs> so now that we've got this set up we got four cards in hand and four cards on field this is where it gets really spicy so what are we going to do with these resources we got a machine in the grave already if we do link five we can go into infinitrack rainstormer and then recover a card by using a, a exceeds material from our deck to the hand and then that card is an omni negate that will attach hertz so basically it's going to give us recursion plus an omni negate or we're gonna go into this which is gonna bring back galaxy soldier and pop on special or we're gonna set up ipsp depending on what you want to do and we also still have emergency galaxy soldier and cyber dragon in hand so i would probably go here for the stormer personally because there's still more to do we're not done <laughs> So you go Rainstormer, pop the Rainstormer, and I would send the Galaxy Soldier. Let's add Therian King Regulus to the hand. Now, five in hand, three on board, and our grave is kind of live, so to speak. Let's activate Cyber Emergency. Now, who are we gonna take from this pantheon of cybernetic beasts? Of course, the one and only Nostra. Okay, so now we've got Naster in hand. As soon as we do that, we're locked into the machine. So I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. But probably what I will do is uh, bring out the Galaxy Soldier. And then Galaxy, Then I'll probably use... Uh, well, no, not Galaxy Soldier. Because if we use Galaxy Soldier right now, we'll be getting rid of Cyber Dragon for free and not getting anything. So if, our, if we go into anything, our next move should be Naster. But... I kind of don't want to do that because I don't want to set the board up like that. But then again, we do have these multiple pots with overflow. So don't overthink it too much. Go ahead and attach Hertz. Bring forth Therion King. Super equip. Take the minus. Bring out your boy. And I will either end on IPSP or galaxy soldier combos. That's probably where I would want to end. But honestly, with the overflow, I kind of feel like I would want to go galaxy soldier combo because I know I'm going to get the pop from the overflow. I know we got the galaxy soldier out here and we got an Omni negate that's going to give us a cyber dragon. So I want to keep my resources intact. And that's, that's the main reason why we're doing this. And we can go even further because if we send this to the graveyard and we bring out the cyber dragon, then basically we're locked into machines. But the next machine that we could make would be uh, uh, cyber, uh, cyber dragon seeker. And we don't really need that. So since that's the case, we can just set and end turn. So now we end on a surplus because we open with, you know, our Amazonist monster. We've got a special summon pop along with the overflow pop. So we're just relying heavily on pops and Omni negates here. And since this card activated its effect was on a normal summon and targeted itself, we're definitely gonna pop our Omni negate here. Giving us the free search. And remember, we're on Cyber Dragon. So this, this free search right here, or, or this recovery right here, is gonna be into the Chimera tech, so for game. So we're gonna pop this, and then we're gonna get our two in the grave, and then we're gonna pop. Yes, all right. Now we're gonna OTK. Hey, it's the War Chief. Um, so let's summon. 
let's activate search deck add this we're gonna activate we're gonna search deck add this we're gonna activate we're gonna bring this card down we're going to uh, go ahead and link to we're gonna do one and two I'm gonna bring this out yep now we got that in the grave we're gonna pop Polly bring out our boy wait oh right yeah I goofed now that's one thing you got to remember you got to remember that and this is why I kind of want to lean away from this like this effect right here so you got to remember about chimera even I forget this sometimes you got to remember that if you don't discard a spell or trap to get the power bond you don't get the fusion in the graveyard effect and that's the one thing I don't like about this which makes me want to lean heavier into other combos but I don't necessarily know um, you know in terms of consistency what's the most optimal setup for this warrior this this warrior combo that i set up pretty much so we've done this we've set all this up you know this multiple attacks on this so it's definitely ggs here but you know i'm a goofy because <laughs> i didn't do it correctly <laughs> but hey you don't have to do it correctly when you play cyber dragon <laughs> So now that I've shown you how to do this, even with Goose, you've seen the full advantage of using something like Amazon as War Chief. So it's something you want to play around with and figure out the correct formula. But let's just go into going second OTKs. All right, boys. So now we're practicing going second against Armored and Dangerous. They run max. They run stuff like Maxi and Imperm and stuff. So it should be an interesting play. And he opens up by just setting one card, which lets you know Maxi is definitely in hand count on the imperm to follow so let's go ahead and try to otk uh our opponent and activate emergency search deck for core now summon core and then we're going to use core's effect to go get cyber dark realm activate cyber dark realm add the chimera activate chimera's effect or not chimera's effect activate realm's effect now activate Chimera's effect. Sending this to grab the power bond. Now this is where it's gonna get a little sticky because we don't know if the Imperm is in hand or not, but definitely um, didn't play Maxi, but it, uh, but definitely didn't set it. So probably no Imperm. So probably not nothing to worry about actually. We didn't, no, actually we just did two normal summons. We haven't special summoned yet technically haven't given the computer reason to play maxi but i got a feeling once we start summoning there's gonna be some maxi action so let's just go ahead um and do this because we're gonna be playing into these combos here so let's go ahead and drop hertz um bring this out master so no maxi which is kind of a interesting little blessing here uh let's go ahead and hit up seeger um, and it's just gonna be classic OTK action, which is which, which I'm happy. I'm down for it. classic OTK action right here. So we're gonna link Seeger. Literally, don't have to show you anything else. All that stuff I showed you before was just to get you to know my deck. <laughs> now you can just see like that the deck as a whole it remains unchanged. Like it still does this like you know what i'm saying <laughs> like let's let's go all the way in <laughs> it still does this so let's go ahead and make the biggest stankiest chimera check we can for no reason 42 of those things he can get so many attacks you can't survive activate i'm gonna send two to the grave and then now it's time to battle and then we're gonna attack and then give our muscle a boost. 63! Ah! Ah! All right, my boys. <laughs> so you know that we can OTK going second with the same Cyber Dark combo. 
And obviously, you don't have to put five cards into it like I did. But <laughs> but you, you clearly see that you can still do the same old combo. So why not try my go first combos, my boy? All right. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Definitely going to be following up to this content throughout the week because this is Cyber Dragon Week. We're going to focus heavily on playing Cyber Dragon and the many different iterations of the deck. The next thing I plan on looking at is the duality uh, spell and look deeply into that deck and that play style. I feel like that deck plays more like heroes um, than anything else with the whole ability to play stuff like mass change. So we'll definitely be talking about that and getting into that. Stay tuned for that. Also, we have Revival of the Duelists. If you were paying attention to this uh, podcast, you definitely saw that this book is a huge inspiration for building this deck and many other decks and how I build decks. So definitely check it out if you haven't. You can read it for free um, on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, also, um, I'm going to be updating this book and adding two more books, uh, the Book of First and Book of Second, which you can see here clearly. And uh, also, we're going to be making more Cyber Dragon content this week on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links um, and live streaming. And also, it's going to be video. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it dank. Or, I don't know, we're going to have to come up with something for the think phase. <laughs>